Good morning, everyone. My name is Java, and here is an outline of the topics we'll cover today. We start by looking at IP basics, which covers various aspects of IP addressing. Then I'll explain what is routing and what is involved in routing. We will also look at the different types of routes used. Let us start with IP basics. An IP address is a numerical label assigned to each device connected to a computer network using internet protocol or IP for communication. Every device in an IP-based network, including routers, print servers, and host PCs, need an IP address to identify the device as well as its location on the network. In simple terms, the function of an IP address is to allocate a unique address to a device on a network so that any information sent to that device can reach it by referring to this address. It's similar to when you send a letter to your friend, you write an address on the envelope, which is uh, analogous to the IP address on a data packet. The letter goes through the postal service and finally is passed on to the postman who searches for the house number as written on the address and delivers it to your friend. This is similar with the way IP addresses are used on the data network to deliver data packets to the correct destinations. There are two versions of the internet protocol which are in common use on the internet today. These are IPv4 and IPv6. The IP version 4 was developed back in the 1970s and at the time it was thought to be more than enough to handle all the network devices in the world. However, since it uses 32 bits for addressing, this put a limit to the number of possible IP addresses and with the expansion of the internet, it, be it became apparent that the original assumptions were not correct. This was primarily due to the explosion in the number and range of IP capable devices that are continuously being released in the market. An interim method is to use NAT or network address translation in routers, where a single public IP address can be shared by a large number of devices located behind the router. To overcome this shortfall, IP version 6 was developed to increase the number of available IP addresses. Since IPv6 uses 128 bits for its addresses, it allows an almost unlimited number of IP addresses that can be used. As noted here, IPv6 was covered in detail in one of our previous webinars titled Draytech IPv6 Solutions, and we are planning to repeat this webinar in the coming months. As you can see here, IPv4 consists of 32 bits and is written in groups of four octets, that is, four groups of eight bits. Rather than writing the IP addresses as zeros and ones, it's written in human readable form, for instance, 172.16.254.1. An IP address consists of two parts the network component and the host component. The network component can be further broken down into subnets. For example, the IP address shown here belongs to the 172.16 network and within the network, we have the subnet .254. Within each subnet, we can have up to 254 devices or hosts. Subnetting essentially is a method to create a larger number of networks. When the internet was developed, IP addressing was first designed with no concept of subnets. The classification into A, B, and C networks was done to cater for different size networks to accommodate large, medium, and small networks. The table here shows the number of possible networks from each network class A, B, and C. A subnet mask is a method that's used to break down a subnet into smaller networks. Subnet mask is made by setting network bits to all ones and setting host bits to all zeros. The table below shows the subnet masks for class A, B, and C networks. The subnet mask can also be used to subnet a network into smaller network segments. For instance, a slash 29 subnet mask 
that is 255, 255.255.248, .255 will give you eight IP addresses for each network, where the host part is equal to 2 square plus 2 to the power 1 plus 2 to the power 0, that is 4 plus 2 plus 1, which is basically equal to eight possibilities. It's important to note that there are two types of IP addresses. These are public IP addresses, which are visible on the internet, and private IP addresses, which are reserved for private use. A router connected to the internet will have a public IP address assigned to the WAN connecting face facing the internet, and also a private IP address range for the LAN side of the router. The network address translation or NAT function in the router will translate the private IP addresses to the public IP address. Here we have the IP address range for each block of IP addresses reserved for private use. We'll now look at routing. Routing is similar to the postal service, which takes your mail and routes it to its destination. Routers use a routing protocol for selecting the path for traffic in a network or across multiple networks. A routing protocol specifies how routers communicate with each other and exchange routing information. There are three types listed here. Interior gateway protocols, type one, or link state routing protocols, such as OSPF and ISIS. Interior gateway protocols, type two, or distance vector routing protocols, such as routing information protocol version one, RIP version two, and IGRP. And finally, the exterior gateway protocols, which are used on the internet for exchanging routing information between autonomous systems, such as Border Gateway Protocol or BGP. Routing decisions are made by using metrics to calculate the best path for a data packet to take. Each routing protocol uses different metrics. For example, the RIP or Routing Information Protocol uses the number of hops or how many networks it must cross to reach the final destination as a metric. Other protocols may use the network bandwidth delay, reliability, load, or MTU in making their routing decisions. On large internetworks, multiple routing protocols are commonplace. For example, there could be a mixture of static routes, RIP, and OSPF routing protocols being used. So the obvious question arises, which route will the router finally use to transport the data? A solution is to look at the administrative distance for a particular route. The administrative distance is a number from 0 to 255 that indicates the reliability of the route's source. The lower the administrative distance, the more reliable the source. The table below shows the administrative distance for each type of root source. A directly connected interface is the fastest and has the administrative distance of zero, followed by static routes. Each router maintains a list of preferred routes to different networks or hosts, which is called the routing table. The routing table shown below is from a Vigor router. There are three parts highlighted. These are the destination IP plus subnet mask, the gateway, and the interface. The first column shows type of route. Please note that C implies connected. The WAN interface is directly connected to this IP address. S or static, where each route entry is manually entered in the LAN static route setup menu. R implies RIP, 
where the route is learned using the RIP routing protocol. The asterisk sign or default route, which is the default path if no other routes exist to a destination. And finally, the, the tilt sign, which implies a private route. When a workstation needs to send data to a destination host or network, the router is usually involved in making that communication possible. This is made possible by the use of routing table. However, if the router cannot find the destination network in its routing table, this destination will be unreachable. In this case, a default route is configured in the router to send all packets for unknown destination networks to the interface corresponding to the default route setting. In the example below, all packets destined for unknown networks are sent to VAN1, that is 168.95.98.254. Static routes are manually configured in the router. They are suitable for small networks and they are usually indicated by key S in the routing table. For dynamic routes, we learn that uh, routes are learned from neighboring routers. They are suitable for larger networks, such as the internet. They are indicated by key RIP or BGP in the routing table. Please note that BGP is now available in the Vigor 2860, 2862, and 2926 routers running the latest firmware. I will now pass to Ash, who will tell you more about static and dynamic routing in Draytech routers. OK, thanks, Java. So um, routing information is derived from sources listed below. It's uh, direct connections. That would be WAN and LAN, VPN connection, static routing, and dynamic routing. The routing table shown here has some different types of routes. Here's a configuration example where static routes are used. Here we have two routers linked to each other. And we have a PC on LAN A to communicate with a device on LAN C on the second router. Static routes are used here to specify the data path. We have LAN B as the common link between the two routers. We need to enter the static route details in each router. Here. We have one static route configured in router A, which says that to go to 172.16.2.0 network, we need to use the gateway 172.16.3.1, which is on LAN 2. Once it is configured, you will be able to see the entry in the routing table as shown here. Another type of routing used in data routers is inter-LAN routing. Inter-LAN routing allows communication between different subnets. This feature is useful if you want to allow communication between any two LAN subnets. For instance, we may have a LAN subnet for accounts configured as VLAN 1 and another LAN subnet for payroll configured as VLAN 3. And we want to allow communication between these two departments. To allow this to happen, we need to enable inter-VLAN routing between two VLANs. In Dray OS routers, we go to inter-LAN routing menu and select which LAN we wish to route by clicking on the intersection of the two LAN to be routed. And in uh, Linux-based routers, uh, such as Vigor 3900-2960 and 300B, the menu options are different. With the latest firmware, you can select LANs to exclude from the routing. By default, enabling routing will route between all VLANs and in the older firmware, we had to use firewall rules to stop routing to certain VLANs. A simple way to check routing is working as desired is to use the trace route function as shown here. Trace route shows the path that the data takes and helps to quickly verify that the routing has been set up correctly. We briefly looked at dynamic routing earlier. Dynamic routes dominate the internet and our routes that a router learns by using a routing protocol. The router learns the routes from neighboring routers running the same routing protocols. 
Examples of dynamic routing protocols and algorithms include routing information protocols known as FRIP, open shortest path first known as OSPF and enhanced interior gateway protocol known as EIGRP. This diagram gives a brief illustration on how RIP routing protocol works. Each router sends a broadcast every 30 seconds with any routing updates. Neighboring routers listen and update their routing tables. In the example shown here, the LAN C goes down and the router to LAN C will be removed from the routing table. The router automatically learns routing update from the other routers and respond to the changes. Here we have a list of dynamic routing protocols supported in Dratec routers. RIP version 1 and version 2 is supported in all routers. OSPF is only supported in Linux based routers models such as uh, 3900, 2960, and 300B. BGP is supported in Linux routers and with the latest firmware, it is also supported in 2860 and 2862 routers. The other two protocols shown here, ISIS and EIGRP, are not supported in Dratec routers. As mentioned previously, BJP is now supported in the Vigor 2860, 2862, and 2926 routers running with the latest firmware version. The description of BGP is that BGP is a standardized exterior gateway protocol designed to exchange routing and reachability information among autonomous systems on the internet. The protocol is often classified as a path vector protocol, but is, but is sometimes um, also classified as a distance vector routing protocol. BJP is normally used for WAN connection for ISPs, uh, universities, or corporate networks. Here uh, we have a diagram of a network using BGP. Here we have three autonomous systems, which could be a corporate network, and each pair is assigned a ASN number. BJP exchanges routing information between each of these autonomous systems. In the routing table in Dratec routers, you will see the symbol R on the left side to show that the route has been derived using RIP, which is a dynamic routing protocol. This brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. For more information, please visit our website www.dridec.com.au or you can even email us at sales at